What's up everybody, this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the inspector window. What's up everybody, this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be looking at the inspector window, but first I just want to make sure you guys are aware we have the new product up. It is five complete projects, beats that I made without the intention of giving them to producers, but with the intention to place them. It's called Bag Up. Basically what you get is you get five beats that are complete full productions from myself um, you get the studio one session file you get the stems you get the midi for the entire song not just four bar sections you get a drum kit with over a hundred sounds uh, brand new drums um, created and programmed by me you get um, actual templates so that when you open up the song window to open a new song it'll give you it'll give you an arrangement a template so that you know what parts for the beat you have to make it's a product like nothing else out there available for studio one users however you can benefit from it no matter what DAW you use because again you're getting the full stems and the full MIDI and the drum kit so you'll be able to load up the stems or the MIDI or both of them and analyze everything um see the different change-ups that occur whenever i do my arrangements these are fully arranged beats complete songs but to get into today's lesson i wanted to go over another beginner subject and this is kind of carrying on from the arrange window lesson i'm going to be going over the inspector now the inspector is accessed by either clicking on this button here or clicking i and what the inspector does is it gives you a um just a full range of options of any way that you could control the given uh channel that you've selected so say for example i select this um snare channel right and i either click um that i up there or you can press i as the shortcut and then boom now we have our inspector so you see up here you've got the name of it you could change the color if you wanted to you could double click on it, change the name. It's letting you know that it's a VST right here. If you select here, you can see you can see the time base for that channel. You could change it to beats or seconds. I'm always going to use beats. You can assign it to a group if you have groups assigned. You can you can use the layer function now. So if you wanted to add a layer to this and program a different snare pattern, then you can go back and forth between layer one and layer two. Now that's that's a really cool feature for say recording vocals and things like that. Cause if you set your vocal recording up to a loop, like say you wanted to record the same hook over and over again and you're recording yourself and you didn't want to deal with pressing stop so you just set this this eight bars to loop and you keep spitting the hook over and over again you could then go back and select the different layers and pick which take you like the best or, or or this actually works really well with the comping feature in studio one but that's a whole different video um you can choose to delay something like so this this is this is powerful for example if you're um creating like say you're creating a drum library and you've got a couple kicks stacked on top of each other here and you and and you're having a phase issue and you wanted to just delay that sound a little bit or if you're if you're doubling if you're doubling vocals from an artist and you only have one vocal track to work with so rather than have them both be on top of each other which is just going to create the effect of um adding more volume to the track as opposed to actually hearing a difference you could delay one of the tracks you know a few milliseconds and that's going to create a difference in the phase to where it sounds uh, it's not going to sound exactly like somebody doing a double but it'll kind of mimic the effect so that is also very important um you can transpose the um the entire the entire channel 
um, by by semitones. So you could go up. I believe it's uh, yeah. You could go up as high as you want, sixty four semitones, and go down at sixty four. I believe, yeah. yeah, you could go down sixty four. Um, so that's th that's al that's always great. You know, if you you know if you've got a sample um, in here that you're playing, say for example. So you're playing your sample and you want to and you want to adjust your snare. You know, just a real quick and easy way to tune your drums after you've went and programmed everything, which is which is important, especially for for um, snares and hi hats and your kicks. You know, you'll program something and then you'll add all your instruments and you'll notice that something sounds a little off. Definitely play with that transpose function; it, it'll it'll it, it'll change your drums a lot. Um, you can adjust the overall velocity by a percentage here you can get into the animation panel now notice when your inspector comes up i think i think it it comes up like this so you got to pay attention to to this icon here this line that has kind of like these square boxes in it whenever you see that that's something that you could drag up and down so if you want to expose everything that happens in the inspector you're going to want to drag it um like this the automation you can you can you could you could turn the display on or off and you can add and remove parameters here and when you when you click the add or remove parameters this is going to be um native to the vst that um is in that is being controlled by this midi channel if you do that in a if you do that in a, and and then you can see you know you have your you have your pitch band your glide everything that's on sample one right because this is a sample one track if i do that with say let's see what do i have in here if i did that with contact and i go to add and remove now i have i have the um the 70s drummer up so i can so i can automate these different hits i can go into i could go into the audio folder and mute things pan things you know draw different draw different things in i can mess with the pitch bend different modulations um different different gm controls that i wanted to get into you can really like get crazy with with the automation with studio one um and and it's so it's so simple to do because it, it labels so well with with the vsts it really integrates well um the next thing that you have down here is the note effects and you can go ahead and add an arpeggiator to um to your VST, you know what I mean, and this these have different these have different presets that you can go ahead and play with. Um, you know, who doesn't like who doesn't like ARPs? Um, you also have the quarter, which will which will depending on depending on the presets that you th that you select, you can you can play one finger chords, which is always good for inspiration. Um, you you can get at the input filter here, and this is this is cool because you can select. Um, you could select which keys you want to be able to play so it's like something similar like with the complete control so you can you can um set up scales into the input filter so that you won't so you could actually play your midi keyboard that doesn't have like the light up scales like um like the complete control does and you can actually use your regular basic midi controller like a complete control which is um, a very slept on feature inside inside um studio one also you have the repeater which this is just like um it's like a note repeat you know same same type of deal as uh as, as you'll find inside the the record function you can flick through these different these different um presets and and do different things you'll see that up here you have the app the opportunity to um change notes so this this is also this also has the ability to kind of work like an arpeggiator another another powerful um creative tool that um that you can that you can really dig into 
with Studio One. And remember the note effects, The what makes them different from insert effects is the note effects is they're affecting the MIDI signal. They're not affecting the, the actual sound of of the um of the channel. So this is all this is all stuff that's that's happening to the MIDI. Now underneath this section, if you pull this up, this is your channel strip. Okay. So just imagine like you took a piece of the mixer out and you're looking at it right here. And this is all stuff that you'll find in the mixer window. I like using this side sometimes because um on my screen I like to have uh I actually use I actually use the inspector channel strip a lot more than I use the mixer because first of all it's bigger and I can have I can have my piano roll up over here I can have my arranger up there and then and then you know add add my effects and my sends down here and it's just better for a um you know for the overall view and functionality for my workflow um you see right here this is where you add your inserts you set up your sends um you you can set up your output for any given channel assign a MIDI ch uh, assign a MIDI channel to it so if you're you know if you're doing things that are specific to different MIDI channels that's important to have um, you can go ahead and set and set your MIDI inputs and also also route things through um, different um, different plugins that have that have that capability um, route them through through different sends that you have set up which which can also be very cool like you know just throw in um, you know, throwing a piano through through a reverb send that you already have, you know, pre fader, and get you know just getting just getting a really wacky sound. That's always that's always uh, fun to mess around with. Then you have um, the actual name of the channel and that options. Here you have your mute, your um, your solo, your record, and and your monitor. And then here will bring up your actual your actual channel strip, um, which is something else we'll get into you have this button right here gives you the ability to load um pre um pre-programmed um effects effect channels so you have like different stuff for drums and the, and these are all studio one presets so these are all like kind of channel strip templates and then if say you've got something say you got something that you always use like for example for example, for me, like I have, I have a couple, I have a couple different different artists that I'm that I'm always mixing their stuff. Like I have this artist, no, no emotion, and he has he has a shitty microphone, but he records in the same position. Um, his voice always sounds the same. So I have I have this preset right here that I can just go ahead and click on, and it'll pull up all the plugins with the settings and the EQs and the compressor exactly how I like. Um, so that I could just go ahead and do what I got to do real quickly. And in order to do that, all you have to do is set up your, um, your, your inserts, however you want them, and then go down here and store effect and click store effects chain. And it'll, it, it, you just name it and all your user stuff will be right here. So that's, so that's, that's really important, uh, for my workflow because it just makes things so fast. Like for example, this trim feature it loads up a mix tool at uh at minus 7.7 7, which is uh, which is for the way that the way that my music comes out like it's it makes it so i don't have to go through the whole process of gain staging to get the track to sound good um at unity which is really 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 important um so down here you have your sends now if you look here um at this section on the bottom if you have an audio track this is where this is where you can you can transpose um, your audio stuff you can tune it so for example we've got we'll just play these uh, these bells And you can also you can also mess with you can also mess with the file tempo. So I've got that at one fifty four. But say I say I change the file tempo down to this, it's gonna it's gonna change obviously the the speed of it. So 
So that's always good, especially when you're sampling, like when you find, uh, when you go ahead and you find the sa the the tempo of um, of one of your chops or one of your regions, you can go ahead and set it up inside the inspector. And then when you when you move your tempo here and you want to kind of make your drums as fast or slow as you want them to go, the audio will stretch and contract to those limitations, which is really important. Um, and then you have things like event effects where you can click on an event and click enable and then it's going to give you a menu down here of different of uh of inserts again and you could go ahead and put a plugin on it and that plugin will only affect the selected region that you have called for and that is that that's powerful some people really like it i mean some people really swear by that shit me personally rather than go into this menu and do all this stuff i'd rather just hold alt drag down and say i wanted to put some type of like phaser or some shit on here i would just i would just like delete all this you know and then delete this one and put the phaser on this track like because i i want to have control of that fader without having to do a bunch of um without having to put in volume automations and stuff like that but people really like it so i don't want to be i don't want to not show it to you guys and that's pretty much it for the arranger so in short you you, you want to make sure that you pay attention to the three different sections of the arranger you have this bottom section here which is the things are going to change for audio and for and for midi um you have you have this ability to change the gain right here which is which is really cool like um you know you can adjust the trim of everything you can you can have you could adjust your fade outs here your tune your transpose your speed ups um your your event effects will be right there in this middle section you're going to have your channel strips so you don't always have to open the mixer when you want to deal with something you could just click on different on different on the actual channel and then manipulate the channel strip in the inspector and then of course up here you're going to have all your timing your ins and outs your automation which is really easy to get to from here makes it super simple to get at what you want and then for your midi stuff you'll have your note effects so I hope you guys took something away from this. I hope you really kind of get a grasp on how powerful these menus are inside of the arrange window because I, I mean, if it wasn't for the inspector, I really, I wouldn't enjoy this program as much as I do. It's, it's one, it's one of the uh, fundamentals that they took over, that they took from logic. And when I seen that they had this, I was just like, yes, thank you. So Keep it simple. Don't be basic. Stop by Studio1Tutorials.com today. Get yourself a membership for premium tutorials. Pick up a copy of Bag Up, and we will see you on the next one.